Thanks. I wonder if I can confuse it by just walking all over the room. It's going to be lots of fun. We're going to flip out. Ah, no. All right. We're going to explore trying to find some different ways to use the brainstorm, how we can use it in all these different classes. And then hopefully you'll see a great assignment um, before you are out of here today. Uh, this picture is just uh, some of the different kiddos that are on Flipgrid. Not my kiddos. I just flip Flipgrid. Not our kids. But um, you're going to, it's just got some nice features. It looks this pretty to the kiddos. Um, and all of that. So why do you want to learn another electronic medium to put in front of these kiddos and all of that good stuff? Um, I like Flipgrid because it's teacher regulated, which is nice. I can go in there. I can take videos out if I want to. If I um, don't want other kids to see them, I can, I can put a privacy setting on them so other people can't see them. If I want kids to see them, I can do that as well. Um, I can do my own topics, so I can formulate topics that are specific to exactly what my kiddos are doing that day, um, which makes it nice because I don't have to look through a bunch of different ideas and try and make them fit. Um, I can just use what I need to for my class. But then the other thing is there are some topics that are on there that are already ready to go. So if you look through them, um, especially maybe if you're out that day or if it's a last minute thing, not that was, any of us ever have last minute things, but they'll have the topics ready to go that you can select and you can put into your Flipgrid pages so that your kids can see it and use it and set their videos up that way. Like I said before, there's different privacy levels and privacy settings that you can put onto the Flipgrid um, pages that you're looking at. You can do a Flipgrid page for your entire class. You can do one for just a group. Um, so it's kind of up to you who has that. Feedback 101 and Vibes, they um, allow you to give feedback to your students um, from the page that they do their videos. So if Ellen had made a video and I looked at that for class, I can give her feedback right through that page so that she uh, gets that or the group gets it and so on. Also, there's vibes. So sometimes my kids, when they do their introduction ones, they'll do something cute or quirky or something like that. So you can hit emojis just like on Facebook that goes streaming up on there and all that fun stuff. And now there's mixtapes. That's a new, I don't know how new, but it's a new feature videos them together we made when you know tapes were a thing I'm that old nice. um, so this is just you know everybody says use images on all of your stuff like the big thing bring kids in well are using the images and the kids are using the images your next step then is to hopefully get them using the videos in a meaningful way. So teaching them, you know, when I'm doing an introductory video, I can't be staring down at my script the entire time or looking at my friend instead of actually looking into the camera and those things. So that this is a pretty safe place for them to be able to do that. So brainstorm really quick. We're going to take like two or three minutes, just whoever you're sitting with and then someone be nice to Fletcher. Uh, <laughs> brainstorm some ideas for how you could use it um, in your different areas and all that, and then we will talk about it in like a minute or two.
talk more about it. Stuck. Oh no, here it comes. It's coming. Slowly. I didn't realize I was there. Oh, it is. Oh, that's not good. I'll just say, still, maybe. There we go. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's funny, because I kind of thought of that for language, but then I never even thought about that for, for your room. Not a lot. Well, like my new try kids don't know. My AP kids probably don't remember. They need to remind themselves what to do in that because we only used it once or twice during the first trimester. Um, but came up with. Ellen, what was your idea? Even though they complain about it, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's a nice, comfy yeah. thing to use. Like they, for scholarships, they don't mind writing the scholar. Well, they don't love writing the scholarship essay, but they don't mind it. Versus when we started making them do the videos, they did not like doing those videos and that. So it's not the worst thing though, but it's a little Aren't uncomfy. Some universities have you, you know, well, both some conference and, and actually like you know a lot of interviews and right. going on. Right. Well, in some some jobs, before you even get the interview, you have to do a video and it, of you teaching or just like the personal statement in that. So. So that's what you just said, right? Yeah. 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 For Elmer, Elmer had to make a, a video about why, what I, I don't know the question. Oh yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to watch them. What's it? I kind of want to watch them. Uh, <laughs> you could do that in Spanish. Yes. 30 seconds. You figure out what I just asked you and answer. That'd be hard. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Yep. That's what I want to do for Spanish part of the exam is a conversation. Ask a question. Or ask, can you have them put like the captions underneath, like they translated? Oh. Spanish. I don't know if you can do it. Drama or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but maybe you could run a transcript. I mean, they can make a transcript as you're doing it. 
or something along those lines. So some different ideas I came up with. I don't know. Anyways, um, all of my math people, maybe they could explain their work. Um, physically modeling the concept, so it's kind of the same thing. Showing it in real life, that one I actually really like. Like if you're out and you have to figure out the square footage of something or how much mulch you need to cover a certain area, actually, hey, here's a real life 30 second video of where this comes into life. Social studies, maybe a historical figures, they could play the part of it if they, if you wanted to do something like that, or they could give you a 30 second recap of the then and now aspect of what you're teaching. Um, you could create a space for an online debate if they wanted to debate back and forth and just keep, in, keep an eye on what they're saying because sometimes they get heated, but they could debate back and forth in their different videos that they do. Um, giving the power to the students' voices, letting them, you know, here's something that we studied or here's something about the Internet maybe and is that infringing on our freedom of speech or something along those lines. Um, science, um, again, demonstrating that learning through the video, so if they have to... I don't, you can't do a dissection that way, but in that same line, if they had to do that, they could do a video of it, and you could see it that way. You um, could do a dissection that way. Okay. You could, have the, you could have them dissect and label and talk about things that yeah. work really well. Okay, so, yay. Um, <laughs> building the library for student, for each student, um, their reflection library. So we, you know, we did this lab or we tried this experiment or this was my hypothesis and this is what happened, um, anything along those lines. Leveled study questions, so letting the kids, you know, you have the level one, you have the level two, you have the level three, and then you have all of those questions for the kids to look at or to hear or, and to maybe answer or whatnot during a study session. It makes for a really big collaborative learning group or study group. English, um, replacing learning logs or reading logs. We haven't really done those around here for a long time, but it would be one way that they could do a reading log. Um, they could explain <clears throat> a grammar process or a grammar skill, um, perhaps going through a multiple choice question where all, most, most of us are doing the ACT style questions and all of that stuff, so you could have them work through the different um, distractors and why the right answer is right. Playing the role again, analysis video, so instead of always writing the essay, they can just verbally give that analysis. Um, language, I thought, uh, again, showing that they've learned something, so if they have to run through the ABCs or the months of the year, anything along that culture, if you have them write essays a speech or anything like that with the culture assignments, but they could do that through the video as well, and then you're not taking up three or four days of class going through that. And then they could just practice there, too. I mean, it doesn't have to be something that's necessarily graded. They could just, at home, you know, show that you're practicing this or whatever it is you're requiring of them. I thought for electives or any class, really, if you have a guest speak speaker, they could reflect on one or two things that the guest speaker talked about. Employment, like the interviews, maybe running through a um, application letter or going through the different parts of an application. Proficiency, if they have to do an online task, you could show proficiency proficiency that way by recording that. Maybe in music they could show that they understand the different notes and the different um, chords and things along that. Mechanical task, I was thinking if they have to know the parts of an engine, they could go through and talk about the different parts of an engine and Austin could talk that that way. If we're still allowing, we are, job shadows and college visits and things like that, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit on the kids. Hey, you're taking this day off for a college visit do a two-minute reflection on what it was or show us around the college while you're there. Same thing with volunteer work. I know um, advocates go and do a lot of volunteer work, and I don't know what they do for a reflection on that, but maybe they could do a reflection video, which then hopefully we could use um, when it comes to its, um, when we're getting checked off as a school. Do you want to talk about Yes, so it might be something we could use, but it could be. Um, any class, visual evidence of learning, it gives all kiddos a place to um, have their voice. You can connect with people outside of your class. You may not want to. You don't have to. But you could. You could connect with other people from other schools or the kiddos could. You could jigsaw materials and then interview and all that. So let's make a flip grid. We're at 15 minutes. So that got really fast there. So if you go to flipgrid.com, if you're not already 
in there, your, or if you haven't already logged in, you want to sign up with Google and then choose your uh, tool, Google, if you have like 300 Google accounts on your computer like I do. if your issue might have been kiddos if they were trying to log in as you or as an educator instead of as a student. And I went to different students and checked that. Okay. And that's... Okay. Because some of them were. Yeah. Even then when they went and... I don't know if they did they just sign up today or go to enter a flip code. Yeah. And I said just Right, it didn't work. Okay, let's see. Um, school did that. So if you are in there, you can go to. He's gonna come in here again. I can move in too quickly. Um, you can go in and make a Flipgrid. What? The kids have to make an account, and they have to go in. Use well using a Flipgrid code. They can use it on their phones too if they download the app, which is nice because a lot of kids they enter a code, so you'll get a code. So let's log in as me. So these are all these different things. So doo -doo 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 -doo. I thought I made a new one last night. Is it in here? All right. So I made a new one last night just for this two days ago I guess um, so this would be the code that the students would enter in that so if you are logged in you should have a page that says my grids and you probably you might have do you have a welcome grid on there or something like that no okay so what you're gonna want to do is hit new grid And then you have to select your community type and you want to use a school email domain. And then whatever you want for your grid name, we'll just call it me. And then you'll have this community code right there and then you can personalize it with a lovely picture or whatever you would like. And you can delete this when we're done, so no, don't worry about it anything that you're doing. So then, if we're there, you should get the school email domain. We have two domains. Here's my problem. Here. That might be what you're nope. because We are at elkhorn.k12.wi.us, but the kiddos are at students.elkhorn, and so on. So you'd have to enter both of those. So, good actions, and then I think edit grid, and then you can add or edit your school code there if you need to. And then you'll need the students ones. Hit enter, and then you should be able to add another one. Students, yep. Yep. Do you have to do the add symbol or no? Oh, yep. My bad. Hey. Hey, I I logged in with my Google. This is really weird. It says Colleen Casper. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Does she have any flip grids in there? No. But it's my. It's VRO. That's weird. That's super weird. It happened when I was down home. It happened with something like when I put in for a sub. It popped up that Colleen Randy contacted me. That's odd. 
But this is really weird. I'm her. Huh. Good for you. <laughs> Multiple personalities. You didn't even know it. Um, so then under your grid, you can make different topics for them. So when I first did this, I had no idea what I was doing, and I have a little bit more idea now, but not as much as I could. Um, but when I first did it, I made my grid for my AP Lit kids, and they did a book talk on it. And it was just a 30-second book talk, which killed my AP Lit kids because they wanted to talk forever and tell me everything they knew versus just a real quick, Here, here's the most important chunk. Um, so the, I made it. We did it. I thought it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. They enjoyed it as much as they can and all that. And then I came back in to make a new one, but I had in this about 60 different videos because I didn't make topics. So if you don't make a topic, it all goes on under that one thing. Okay? And then, which, if I remember correctly, because I haven't done it that way before, if you do it that way, the kids can't see each other's if you don't want them to see each other's. In all reality, I, not many of my kids have ever looked at each other's flip grids, unless I make them. And that. So if you make a new topic, that'll segregate your different activities with them. So I haven't done a flip grid with this um, trimester's English 11 kiddos. So all I have is this one um, in here right now for practice. But like last, maybe last trimester. What did I get? What do I have? We'll look at this one. It's so like in this one we have all of their different videos then. So when you have an assignment in there, mm -hmm. is it simply a spot for them to turn it in? Or do you put like video instructions in there too? You could. So like in this one, I put the requirements um, for what I wanted them to be talking about in their 30-second book chat. Um, in the one for is this the right one? English 11. I put in there just tips to use both sources and to make sure there's eye contact, and then I added a little image for them to, yay, I have an image. Um, you could do a video in that and teach it to, or have them go at it that way. Um, how do we do that? So we'd have to go new topic, title, all of that good stuff status and then record a video but we're not going to really record when a video. They, when they right log now. into this, are they clicking the like Google sign in then pretty much? They, get some they need to click the Google sign in um, but they need to make sure when it comes up on their screen unless they've already used Flipgrid it's going to log them in as an educator and if it logs them in as an educator they're not going to be able to use that Flipgrid code. I'm just curious because I there's a couple sites similar to this where it's you sign in with Google and then they deposit stuff, but they've all got like so many different accounts now. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys, but they're always like, I can't get into this with hmm. my school address. And this one they can in get into. They're Chromebook and they're signed into Google Classroom, but they're not able to get into Edpuzzle or these other things because they, they have so much. Oh no, this yeah. one they can use their school email for. Um, and they should be good to go with it. At least they always have them um, in here and that. Let me see really quick. We went through that stuff already. And then, oh, this is just the Flipgrid page, so we really don't need to go there. New Flipgrid, we did that. Um, so the help for it, teachers share things on here, which is kind of cool. Hopefully this opens up right. You can go in here under the disco library and you can look for different topics. So like I did high school language arts and book talk. And so let's do a four years. So you have to complete the activities in the video by pausing and then going and finding this different stuff. So if you'd want to use one of those, you just select whatever class you want to put it in and you add it to it. And that assignment's added to the class for you. Um, so like this one, she just had this page in there. 
as the different things for the kiddos to go ahead and find. It's nothing fantabulous, but it's something um, that would work. There was another one. I don't know if this one. Yeah. So this one was kind of cool because it opened up. Um, so it has an assignment for the kiddos to do. It also has the link to the YouTube video. Unfortunately, it doesn't link to TED Talks because I tried that because Ellen and I used a TED Talk with our kiddos. Um, but it links to the video for them to watch, and then it has the assignment to go with it. So again, you have all your links and everything that you can just add to whatever classes you would want to add them to for them to be able to go ahead and do those different assignments. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff up here. Like, I clicked on one of them, and it was somebody at an aquarium talking about the different kind of fish and all that, and, you know, making your own aquarium and so on. So, so I created a prompt. Okay. And it gave me a choice of Whoa. either click code is this or here's the direct link to the new topic. But if it's the first time, I just want to give my direct link can try it. I would just take note of your flip code or you know how to get back in there in case it doesn't work. But otherwise, a direct link is just fine. Or like when I was... Because then they won't see the other stuff. Right. right. And like my kids too, the first week of school, last trimester, we kind of did a scavenger hunt. So I used QR codes for most of the stuff they were doing. So Flipgrid will give you a QR code if you want to use a QR code and have them do it that way. I mean, there's a ton of different ways you can do it. For me, I felt like the QR code was just more work because then they have to download a QR scanner and they have to scan it and it just takes them where they were going in the first place in that. So it makes them a little more tech savvy, I guess, but it doesn't really help them in the process. Oh, you can't, yeah, you, you're in there with the classroom? Well, I just copied it. Okay. There should be. Oh, boy. See, this is where I'm not as good as I wish I were. Um, so, action. Nope. Share. Okay. So, I can share to Google Classroom through the share on there. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if it actually works. But the link should work too, right? It should. I just oh, another way to narrow it. Should I give it to my AP Lib students and see if they have it done for tomorrow? This is um, some of the sort of thing that when I when I need to click on if there's somehow they're able to sign in the Google Classroom even though they if they click on that thing on the far right they're signed in under somebody else's name and then it doesn't all play nice with each other. Huh. Weird. So I think we have a whopping minute, right? What time is your next one supposed? Well, I'm in there too. Okay. Oh, you're gonna make grammar fun. Wait, it already is. Oh, man. There is so much stuff that's already there. Um, I don't know. I mean, and there's some more ideas for how you can use the videos, but you can think of a ton of stuff to use them for, I'm sure, or ways to use it. It's just, it's really a matter of having the time to navigate it and figure it out and make it useful because the technology shouldn't impede what we're trying to do. Hopefully it helps. So one of these that I'm just looking through asks, like, gives them a task, a video to make, mm -hmm. and then says after you filmed your video, respond to two members of our class. Mm -hmm. So is that a setting or it's something that's automatically on those that people can respond? For like, can you change it or do you, what do you want it? I'm just wondering, like, if we were, if a student, if I wanted students to comment on other yeah. people's, is that something that when you create a Flipgrid? Yes. Is In your settings, you can do that. Yeah. But I don't remember how to stop. Okay. 
So it's not automatically on one, but it's a setting that has to be able to respond. I think it's automatically set up that you can respond because we trust the kiddos to be good people in that. But like Maureen had said earlier and brought up, what if they're being mean or things like that. And so there is a way that you can shut down being able to comment. And it's probably like the Google Classroom where you just got to go in and click who has the ability to comment and that. So, all right. Well, thank you. We'll start that when more people for Padlet show up. There's only, wait, two of them, three of us. Where are you guys going? Oh, I wouldn't, okay. That's awesome. I love it. Hey, Betsy. Ew. It's like the magic school bus. Is it just us? Um, I think Handel might be in here too. We'll find out. No. What was she? Did they totally close hers down? Okay, that's smart. Well, hopefully she just. I wonder if they made her stay or if they just let her go home to rest before she has to come to that meeting. Hey, Princer. Hi there. You could use Flipgrid. I don't know. I'm going to see what's all well, it's, no, well, no, Flipgrid was the last one. You're going to use oh. Padlet this hour. Yeah, I know. But I bet you any, there have to be Fayette things for Flipgrid. Yeah. Let's see. We're going to look while we're waiting for people to come oh, in. Yeah. What are you looking at? Oh, yeah, the food drawer. Well, you know what? I'm limited to those four drawers now. Um, if the first drawer or the bottom drawer on this side of my desk has candy in it, though, if you want chocolate. There's some in there. Buy out and help. Gym class year eight health promo. Como lo que comemos? Almost? So much slow? I went to the breakout EDU. Oh. And so the digital breakout EDU. Oh, you could do meditation in Bayad. Oh, yeah. Look at it. There's they one that for in, it. Well, actually, that would be like up Cheryl's alley for personal fitness. Let's see what That's it's got them doing. See what students, oh, it's just what students have to say about it. Maybe we don't want that one. Oh, whoa, click the same one. Hold on. Mental health. Mental health and health class. Create a mental health PSA. Keep in mind the advertising hooks as you choose your ad and audience. Pick a subject regarding mental health. Recognize the signs of depression. Mental illness are common. Suicide. There is health. Reducing the stigma of mental health. And how can I help a friend with Not a writing assignment, it's a video assignment. But you could have it be a writing assignment first, then a video assignment. Already ready. Cool. Mission. He's going to come back four months from now and say, What was that? I love that. I could run a long ways like that. If I was doing it like I was supposed to be running and I'm in a chair, my feet would probably get stuck and go. I had a kid lose that year. It was worse. Oh. Well, yesterday we're doing conditioning. We're in the Yeah. Sorry. I thought I, I forgot until right now. Should we talk about Padlet? As I call playing with Padlet, I'm full of alliteration today. <laughs> wait, Teresa's got to come back. We'll wait for a quarter of our group to come back. It's so much fun. Right now. I know. It tries to. If I go too fast, it gets mad. 
Oh, I can't wait. But I, I had um, the sun expo over the weekend, and so I feel like I'm like extra super sensitive to. I was just in the virtual reality one. Oh. And I'm just like, so bear with me. In the virtual reality, it's hard when you haven't had the stomach flu versus even. Well, I didn't know what I was signing up. I didn't know what that was. I'm so like. Did you go through the human eye too? Huh? McBurney came down and said he went through the human eye. Oh, I didn't do that one. No. Oh. But I like, I well, and I kept like I had to take it right, and then like everyone else had, and I couldn't, I couldn't because I was at all. Yeah. I, I'm, this is how behind I am. Like I, I am not like up with the times. Like I didn't know what VR was, so I just like signed up for something. I only know because the way did it. And then I was like, oh, that's what this is. So that was me. Like I'm like, like, like an old person. Like oh, a smartphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, if I um, if you need to leave, you need to leave. If I put my head down, mm -hmm. I, it's all good. I have we have time to play with Padlet because I don't think it's as much to teach. So basically, Padlet it's a virtual wall where kiddos can record their thoughts, not record like video, but they actually type out their thoughts or give you answers, or I'll have them do images. Um, if we need to brainstorm, it works really well for that. And so on. Why Padlet? It's super simple to use. Um, there are some, like, things can go wrong with it, obviously, because it's the internet and all of those. Can I just, I just can you say, say that? Mm -hmm. This is a mm -hmm. you're being recorded, though. Remember that. Oh, okay. But this is, we used this one last. Uh, a few years okay. ago. Just making sure. Yep, because I, when I opened it up, that's the one that came up, and I'm like, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I knew what Yep. Okay, yeah. Totally. Now, you can figure out who said what. Yes, you can figure out who said what, and you can set your settings so that it's linked to the person, which is great. Um, so you can use Xiaomi tablets, regular computer, all of those things, but it's free, which is what's really nice for us. Uh, so let's go. We're going to create an account and create a Padlet just so we are ready to roll. Did I give myself a link? No. Arnold, you're better than that. Oh, I created a whole new thing. All right, so if you're going into Padlet, I think it does still give you that option too. You only get three, three. Right, is it at three? It's down to three. It was at eight last night. It's three or three, and otherwise it's eight twenty-five a month. Oh, that's weird. I have more than three right now. What? Is that on yours? I already have a tablet. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, I have I like four three. in here. I have two from Rita and then two. I have eight. Well, I guess I won't be making one in two. But you can delete them. Oh. And that. So when I'm, like, these ones I have in here just because I haven't needed to kick them out yet. And, like, my one from Donnie here from last year, it doesn't count as one of mine. It's one that's been shared with me because she had to do it as an assignment, but... It doesn't count as one of those ones that I get to use. So that's odd. But you can delete them, so you don't have to make fake names or anything like that. Um, if you haven't logged in or you don't have an account, make sure you choose your Elkhorn domain because um, it might, I don't know if it allows you anything else or anything different like that. So the next thing is to choose what kind of a Padlet you want to make because it gives you all these different options on the different types of Padlets. Um, well, now I have it. So this is my harmonious wall that I made last night. So as far as formats go, we can have it be a canvas where it's get Actually, hold on. Let me go to a different one, and it'll show you. If I go to Dover Beach here, this is a silent discussion my kiddos did 
while we were in AP Lit, so I'd post questions like on Facebook when they have those discussions, and they just had to respond to it on here instead of verbally to the class and that. So if I change my format, I can make it into a wall. Come on. So a wall just puts them all next to each other and okay. um, and so on. I don't. It's a lot when you look at this group and what they were doing and all that good stuff. Um, but a wall looks like that as far as these are concerned. Um, a stream was what I had it in. So they would be in the order in which they came in. Um, this is just when you have it. So then they see everybody's yeah. as well. Yep. So then it's just they can see what everybody has to say. They can see what everyone has to say. Um, they can respond to each other too. So this worked out well because I would pose a question. At some point, I posed a question. So like this one, Kaylee was answering question eight. So she would put answer eight, and she'd write her um, whole thing um, about that. But then it would give me a chance to go back and ask. Like Bree, she had uh, pointed out some personification, and then I just wanted to get to the how. How does that actually do what you're saying it does? And so on in here. So she could respond back to that, and the kids could comment on each other's. And then, like, we would use images to show, like, in this one they were showing, I think, the solidarity of being, or this being alone. Um, and that, I don't have very many of those on there, though. Those might have expired or been taken away. But a picture to show the town and, and the alone and this, that the people were feeling at Dover Beach and that. So I, you can choose any format that you want. In that back channel wasn't available when I first did this, um, but that works kind of nicely now that I can change it to it now because it puts me on one side and them on the other. The only way it doesn't work out so hot is like if Aubrey was asking Kaylee a question, it's all going to be over here versus them looking to my side. Um, so when you go to make it, it should give you the option of what you want to do. Oh, 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 okay. So it. you should have all got these it. different oh, options oh, oh, there. Okay. Got it. And that I just, if you make it and you want to change it, you just have to click on those dots, but they're not working right this moment. No, so Padlet, if they've used it before, they're pretty good with it. Before they need you to open them, like how to put their post on there um, and things like that, because they expect like something to be down here for them to click on it and all of that. Like you just would click on here and it would give you a box and then you had to add your information to it that way. Now it should come up this, like this. Their upload, links, all of that good stuff too. Okay. So they can do a lot of different things with it that way. Um, let's see. So different things that you can do with your Padlet. You obviously can change the title of it. The one that I made, it gives you some really weird titles. I have a My Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Wall. Um, I didn't type all that in and so on. So change it to whatever you want to call it. You can put it, you know, I think Greg would find this applicable. It was made with the help of a typing monkey. Um, you can change your wallpapers for it. You can add wallpapers to it, all that good stuff like that. So there's a lot of changes you can make. The one that I really like is the profanity filter that they've added in. So you can turn the profanity filter on. Um, so it'll take care of profanity. They, they always find ways, if they want to, to sneak some stuff in there, but at least you have that. Um, the format, that's kind of what I was showing you at the first one. And then the other thing is, if you want to use a board again, like if I wanted to reuse this board, why are you being weird? 
if I want to review or reuse this board, I could clear all of the posts and just reuse the same board so that I didn't have to change all the settings. Where was the profanity thing on this side? Profanity filter went, let's see. Like when you make one and it, the thing comes up on the side, you scroll down and it filters it. Use this now to scroll down. Oh, if you want to go back, let me close this. And you go to modify. So okay. the little oh, flower okay. or the gear, as some people yeah, like to call it. it. You should be able to on there. And then, let's see, so all those things, privacy settings, you go and see your privacy settings. So, like, I remember several things with my kids. Um, like, if we were having a potluck or something like that, I like it so everyone so you don't have 12 cans of brownies sitting in your room. Um, so I'd put a Padlet up there. They'd all put up there whatever they're going to see or what they're going to bring. And then I would lock it down so that they weren't changing. I didn't want to bring what they were bringing. Just in that. I tried to lock them or to private or password protect something once I'm no longer looking at it. Just because I can't. That just takes away from them. So then, uh, sorry if you start with them, Mr. Sparky, but then, so if I'm on this, so it gives the address for it, so mm -hmm. I can call it EZ3YZ, yep. whatever. So then you just post that up there? They sh to get into yours? Or the password to get into it? Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. If like as long as. You just post and then they just. Post yep. That and they should be able to get right into it and that. And um, let's see. So then sharing it, you can use, again, you have a one click share it on Google Classroom, which is nice. Um, share it on Twitter if you want. Maybe you wanted to just see what the world has to say. I don't know. Um, you could do that that way if you want. You could email it out to the kiddos. Um, you can also save it like as a PDF so that you have that image of it if you would need it for anything. Um, like along those lines or download it if you have to put it, if you need it for your educator effectiveness, something along those lines. You can use it for that, too. You have that access to it. Um, so just quick uses for it. Students, they can take notes. They can brainstorm on their discussion, research board. They can process their notes on there. I mean, if they just took notes on something, they could come in the next day, and you could just have them go through and put the most important concepts up there. It's five minutes of that, and then there's that running record of it. Educators. Um, surveying your students, I've done it at, for the potluck, I've done it for books that they've read in the past, uh, what they remember about books, or like AP if I'm surveying them, what books do you want to cover um, to be ready for the test and the, those things. They can share their notes or you can share notes on there as well. Um, facilitate discussion, you could post questions on them there for them to answer and things along that line. I know we had talked about um, protein, I think, protein powders or something like that one time so that you could start a discussion on there and then put them off to writing the paper on it later just so they get their ideas floating. And then inquiry, too. You could assign kids different levels of questions, and they could post their questions and then have them flip. You had a level one question you had to write, but now you're going to go answer a level three question that another kiddo um, wrote and so on. So you could flip it around that way so that they're practicing those inquiry skills and that. Kind of making them or playing with them. We can talk about different ideas for them, but it never helps to go to these things and not have time to play around with it.